I want to start this message today with this question. How many losers in the house? Don't you dare raise your... You raise your hand. We're going to deal with that before you leave today. Uh, maybe I should have said it this way. How many Dolphins fans... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I, I don't want to... I, oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't want to go there. <laughs> There's nobody in this room today destined by God to lose. Everybody in here, if you are a follower of Christ, is destined to win. That's the title of today's message, is simply that, destined to win. You were born to win. Contrary to the popular song of my generation, you were not born to be wild. You were born to win. You were purposed by your Creator to win. That's what God's Word means when it says we're to live our lives moving from faith to faith and glory to glory. There are way too many believers that are living from fear to fear and failure to failure. Instead of living from victory to victory, you live from defeat to defeat. There are no losers in this church. There are no losers in the kingdom of God. There is a winner on the inside of you. There is a winner on the inside of everybody in this room today. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. Listen up. Thoughts for you to lose and be defeated and depressed and upset and frustrated all the time. So you just barely hang on. Now, you know what? There are a whole lot of, especially Pentecostal people, who believe their life is supposed to be like that. Denied every good thing. Don't ever smile. Don't enjoy anything. Just suffering. And, and, and a, lot of people in, a lot of people in our movement understand intercession like that. That intercession is like this weight of depression on my life all the time. I'm just weeping and crying. That's not even what intercession means either. God says, I have plans to prosper you. I have plans for greatness in your life. I have plans not to harm you. I have plans to give you hope and a future. In other words, God's plan for you is a winning plan. It's a winning plan. When he chose Abram, who later became Abraham, you understand God did not choose Abram because Abram was worshiping him when God chose Abram Abram was an absolute heathen he didn't choose Abram because he found him to be righteous he chose Abram and purpose to make Abram righteous God chose him he became the father of our faith that's what the New Testament says he's the father of our faith Please never confuse the covenant of faith cut with Abraham. I'll just say Abraham because most of us understand his name as Abraham more than Abram. The covenant of faith cut with Abraham. The Ten Commandments are not a covenant. which later became over 600. They are not a covenant. They're laws given through Moses because of the demand of the people. The covenant made with Abraham hundreds of years before Moses has always been God's best winning plan for humanity. And so I want to read from the new covenant Built upon the foundation of the old covenant, not law, the covenant God cut with Abraham for humanity. Listen to what the Apostle Paul writes to us in Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 7. Understand then that those who have faith, those who have faith are children of Abraham. You are a child of Abraham. I'm a child of Abraham. This is New Testament now. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. 
and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. Hold up. He announced the gospel in advance to Abraham, saying, all nations will be blessed through you. And look at verse 9. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Now, we had to get that before I can go into the Old Covenant, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and start reading through some of the details of the covenant God made through Abraham that's still in force for you and I today. Deuteronomy chapter 28, let's start in verse 1. For if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all of His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. That's a part of the covenant. It's exactly what He said to Abraham. I'll set you up and you'll be the greatest nation in all the earth. All the nations will come and bow down to you. Look at this verse 2. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb, your children will be blessed. In the country, the land, in the, I'm sorry, you will be blessed. In the, the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. All of that is a reference to whatever your career, your profession, your company, or your business is, God's promise to bless it. Your basket, basket, and your kneading trough will be blessed. See, they're speaking in the the vernacular of the agricultural professions of the day. That's why you see that a lot through Scripture. He talks about the crops and the grain and the calves and the herds and blessed in the stall and the barn because that was how they lived. They made a living from the land, from the ground back then. That was most of their professions, if you will. That's all, that's all referencing whatever your profession is today. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction and flee from you in seven directions. The covenant of Abraham. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns. Well, he just referred to basket. Now he's talking about barns. Levels of blessing. And on everything you put your hand to, the Lord your God will bless you in the land He is giving you. Does that sound like God has destined you to win? Has He promised and covenanted with us that we are winners in this life? The Lord will establish you as His holy people, as He promised you an oath if you, command, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to Him, then all the people on the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground in the land He swore to your ancestors to give you several times this references the original covenant cut with Abraham still in force even in, in the, this is the, the ministry the season of ministry of Moses here in Deuteronomy verse 12 the Lord will open the heavens the storehouse of his bounty Would you look at that? Already we see basket, barn, and now bounty is promised. To send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention 
to the commands of the Lord your God that I gave you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you to the right or to the left, following other gods, little g, or serving them. That is rich. Don't, we cannot read a passage that is referencing the covenant of Abraham and, 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 and dismiss that as, well, that was part of the law given to Moses and to his generation. No, no, no. It's a reference many times through to the promise God made to Abraham to make him great, to bless him. And he reminded Moses of it. And that generation, he reminded Joshua again because he said, every place your feet touch, Joshua, I will give it to you of the land that I promised to give you. It's the promise of faith through Abraham, and it still stands to this day. So I want somebody in here to start thinking of yourself as a winner before you leave this place today. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And David inquired of the Lord and said, Shall I go up to the enemy's camp and get my stuff back? And the Lord said to him, Go up, for you are going to be defeated there. That's not what he said. Go up, David, but I just thought I'd let you know you're going to lose, but you give it your best shot. He said, go up, David. You are going to recover all. March on over into the enemy's camp. You are going to win it all back. I came to tell somebody else in this room today, don't quit now. The victory is at hand. Don't stop now. You are too close to winning. The game is not over. There is still time on the clock. Stay on the field. You are close to the finish line. You are just about to win it all. Keep sowing your seed. You are about to win a bountiful harvest. Keep sowing your prayers. You are about to win an answer from heaven. Keep sowing your tears. You are about to win joy unspeakable and full of glory. Keep sowing your little because you are about to win much. Keep sowing even in weakness. You are about to win great strength. Keep sowing even through pain. You are about to win that healing. Hallelujah. Now understand something. You never experience God first by what you say. You don't experience God first by what you say. You experience God first by what you think about Him, what you think of Him, who you think He is, Again, as a man thinks in his heart, in his mind, so is he. You are experiencing God first according to your thinking. you got to think like a winner in order to win. You're not going to win if you think like a loser. So here's the question. So what are you really thinking about God? What do you think about His promise? What do you think about giving? What do you think about worship? What do you think about tithing? What, because see... You're going to respond and you're going to receive based on what first what you think about it. What's in your mind. No wonder scripture is so strong in both testaments about the role of our mind and being careful what we entertain in our mind, being careful what we think upon, guarding the thoughts and the intents of our heart, and setting a watch around our heart because out of the thought processes of your mind come your reality. Pastor, you, you sound kind of more like a motivational speaker today than you do. Well, I don't know about you, but I need motivation on a regular basis. So if you want to view this as a motivational speech today, that's all right. Be motivated by the presence of the Lord through this message today. Be motivated to begin to think like a winner. Because whether you win or lose starts in your mind. Stop accepting the things you can change. Well, I just can't. There's nothing I can do. I, there's no, I, I have to just accept the things I cannot change. My friend, there are as many things, if not more, things that you can change. Starts with your thinking. 
You've got to think differently. You've got to renew your mind through the Word of God. Winners are victorious. Losers are defeated. To be a winner, you've got to get your mind ready. You've got to guard and keep your mind. You've got to be ready to learn new things. You've got to be ready to change behaviors. You've got to be ready to grow. You've got to be ready to be disciplined. Oh boy, there's a fun one. Well, I can't change now. It's been too long. (laughs) I was born this way. I never really have been a very smart person. I didn't get my degree. I've had this problem too long. My friend, those are the thoughts of a loser, not the thoughts of a winner. So you see, there were 12 spies that Moses sent into the promised land I hope you know it didn't take them 40 years to get there. They got to the promised land in a few months, two to three months maybe, no longer than that, because of their unbelief when Moses made the mistake of sending in 12 um, deacons to, oh no, uh, (laughs) he made the mistake of sending 12 deacons People, uh, they're called spies. He chose them to go in and spy out the land. When God had already said, this is the land. You're going to go in and possess it. You're going to go in and take it. It's the land I've sworn through Abraham, the original covenant, to give to you now. This generation is going to have it. Ten had faith in the giants they saw. Two had faith in their God. It's never a majority, it seems. It's never, it seems like it's always just a few that'll continue to believe and stand in faith. Yeah, so ten saw the giants, two saw their God. Ten had a loser's mentality, two had a winner's mentality. And the two winners now didn't ignore the existence of the giants. They saw them too. They chose to believe the promise of God. Who said, I'm giving you this land. You're going to go in there and you're going to win it. You're going to possess it. Two of the spies chose to set their minds on things above. Chose to set their minds and their faith upon the promise of God no matter what their natural eye saw. Because we don't walk by what these natural eyes see. We don't walk by what these natural ears hear. We walk by faith in the promise of God. They remembered what God said. I am bringing you into a land and you are going to possess it. And that's what came out of their mouth. So here's a word for somebody today. It's time for you to possess the land. It's time for you to go up and possess it. See, of those 12 spies, 10 were giant conscious. Two were God conscious. 10 saw themselves as losers. Two saw themselves as winners. There's always giants. But the giants are there for one reason only. To be killed. Only reason the giants are there, to be killed. You see, losers are always going to see how big the giants are. Winners will always see how big their God is. Losers talk about their problems all the time. Winners talk about their possibilities. Losers see opposition all around. Winners see opportunities all around. Losers always talk pain and sorrow. Winners talk health and happiness. Losers agree with the devil's plan. Winners agree with God's promise. Losers talk like victims. Winners talk like victors. Losers have a bag mentality. 
Winners have a bounty mentality. Friend, hear me today. You are not a loser. You are God's creation. You have great value. He's implanted in you the seeds of success, faith, and victory. And you are in, I mean, you are a winner. Get your mind off of what you do not have and set your mind upon what you do have, which comes down to you from the Father above. Stop giving praise to the devil. Stop magnifying his works. Stop exaggerating his power. Jesus Christ rendered him completely defeated by the power of the cross. So start magnifying the cross and you will begin to win as never before. But get ready to change. Get ready to be changed. Get ready to forgive some folk you've refused to forgive. Mm -hmm. Get ready to give an offering you've refused to give. Pastor, just when it was getting good, you had to go, had to go back to that. Get ready to attend a prayer meeting you haven't attended. Oop. Get ready to step up and serve, and you haven't been serving. Get ready to obey the Word of God. 1 Peter 1.13, just listen, it says this, Wherefore, gird up. Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, be balanced, that's what that means, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter goes on to say in chapter 4 verse 1, arm your mind. Well, that's a very militaristic phrase, arm your mind. Your mind, then, is a weapon in this spiritual battle we fight. Remember, the battle is always won or lost first in your mind. Based upon what you think and what you believe. And my friends, if the devil can just get you to believe one lie, if he can get you to believe one lie, he can destroy you with it. He came on the scene, in the garden, with a question on his lips. He has been asking it ever since of every child of God since Adam and Eve. Did God really say? Did God really say? Whatever you do, my friend, don't change your story now. Don't change your story now. Stick to your story. Don't change your story. Yes, God did say, and I believe the Word of God. Come hell or high water, I'm going to stand with the Word of God. I will believe what God said. Let everybody else be a liar. I will believe in my heart and in my mind and in my thoughts and in my meditations. And I will see the reality of the promise of God right before me. I choose to believe God. I choose to set my mind and affections on things above. Let me tell you something. When you get interested enough in winning, you'll start winning. I said if you get interested enough in it, you'll start winning. I didn't say if you want to win. Everybody wants to win. I want to win. I want to win. We got a prayer line for winners. Come on, I'll get in the prayer line. Lay hands on me and make me a winner. No, when you really get interested in winning... You will change whatever needs to be changed to start winning. Yeah, when you get interested enough in having peace, you'll have some peace. When you truly get interested enough in being the head and not the tail, you'll start being the head. In being above and not beneath, you'll start being above. The greatest power you and I have ever been given we don't use it wisely enough. Let's use it more wisely. And it is the power of choice. Powerful 
weapon God has put within our hands, the power of choice. Make the right choices. Choose rightly. Choose life. Choose blessing. Choose peace. Choose to win. Your choices create your circumstances. Now let me give you this before we go. I'm already out of time. Winning is not just going to be dropped in your lap. But it is placed within your reach. (laughs) The grapes of Canaan land didn't just fall in their mouth. But the grapes were placed within their reach. Well, pastor, if God wants me to be a winner, I'll be a winner. If He wants me to be blessed, I'll be blessed. If He wants me to be healed, I'll be healed. I'm just waiting on God. Because after all, God is in control. That makes religious people feel so good. God's in control. Well, I barely got here today. I was pain all over my body. I couldn't get, I'm behind the car, broke down. But God is in control. Here's one for all of you theologians. Stop assigning to the sovereignty of God the responsibility of your own choices. What does that mean? Well, go look it up. Stop assigning to the sovereignty of God the responsibility He has placed within you to make good choices. Use the mind and the power to choose that God has given you and create winning situations and circumstances. The grapes, yes, they're for you, but you've got to reach for them. That joy isn't just going to fall into your lap. you got to reach for it. That healing isn't just going to run you over. you got to reach for it. The job isn't just going to fall from heaven on you. you got to reach for it. That business is not just going to start itself. you got to reach for it. The cookie is not going to jump out of the cookie jar and land in your mouth. you got to reach for it. Oh, the things, my friend, God has placed within your reach. No wonder the Apostle Paul said, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I am reaching. I am reaching for what is ahead. I am pressing toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. Paul didn't say, he didn't describe the life of faith. He, he said this, straining. The life of faith, he described it this way, as a life reaching and pressing forward. He didn't say I'm declaring forward. He didn't say I'm praying forward. He didn't say I'm speaking forward. He said I've got to reach and strain forward. Pressing on toward the prize. Pressing on toward my healing. Pressing on toward that business. Pressing on to that peace I need. Pressing on to the prize. Pressing on to those grapes that I can see. They are just within my reach. Hallelujah. So I came to tell winners the prize is within your reach. But you do have to reach. You do have to reach. Paul said, i got to reach to get a hold of it. It's not just going to fall at my feet. I've got to reach. And in the reaching, uh, yeah, you got to make some sacrifices. In the reaching, some things have got to die. In the reaching, you got to surrender some stuff you weren't willing to surrender. In the reaching, you got to forgive some folk you haven't been willing to forgive. In the reaching, you got to give some offerings you've never been willing to give. In the reaching, you've got to discipline your, your word and your study life in a way that you've never been willing to do it. But if you'll reach for it, you will receive it. It is just within your reach. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
pressing, reaching. I'm a winner. Done with losing. I'm not moving from failure to failure, from defeat to defeat. I'm moving from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and from victory to victory. By faith, through the covenant, God originally cut with the father of our faith, whose name is Abraham, is still in force to this day. Every promise made to Abraham is for you and I today, every single one of them. God is the initiator. God is the one who cuts covenant. We break covenant. God will never break covenant. He will never break covenant. Stay connected to Him because you and I don't know about you, but I need to live up under the covenant. I got to stay in covenant with God. That's my only hope. I'm so glad God came and initiated a covenant relationship with me. Grace is through a covenant. Salvation is through a covenant. Jesus Christ came and fulfilled the covenant that is still in force for you and I today. So all the blessings of Abraham will come upon you. You'll be blessed going in, blessed coming out, blessed laying down, blessed rising up. Your barns will be blessed. Your business will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. Your church will be blessed. Your ministry will be be blessed. Your gifts will be blessed. Your words will be blessed. Your thoughts will be blessed. Heaven will be open over your life. You will live your life as a winner and not as a loser if you will walk in the covenant that God has made with us and has revealed to you and walk by faith and not by sight. Give your sacrifices of praise and worship and giving and service and love and forgiveness. It is all within your reach. Hallelujah. Will you stand up on your feet? Everybody standing. God, I thank you for a house full of winners. Lord, I'm not asking if you're a winner, come to the altar, because I declare you're all winners. It ain't a matter of how you feel or what you think, or is it true for you? It is true for you. God says, I know the thoughts, the plans. I have planned winning. You were born a winner. At conception, you are a winner. You're a winner right now. Change the way you think. Stop thinking like a loser. Open up. God, lift the veil. Give me eyes of faith so that I can see what you see about my life. Give me ears to hear what you say about my life, oh God. I'm a winner. My friend, you're a winner. This church is a winning church full of winning people who are winning other people. Hallelujah. Yes. Everybody in this house, every marriage, every couple, every single person, every divorced person, every widow, every student, every young person, every old person, retired, still working, business owner, entrepreneur, student, teacher, educator, everybody in this room, my friend, you're a winner. You are a winner. It's time to start winning. We got to put some points on the board before the clock strikes zero and the time runs out. We got to put points. We got to make some scores. We've got to begin to win. In any area that has been losing, we're going to turn it around and begin to win in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let it be so. Let God's word and his covenant be true and let everything else be a lie. Yes, devil God did say, I'm a winner. Yes, he did say, I'm the head and not the tail. Yes, he did say, I'm the healed of the Lord. Yes, he did say, he has a dream and a greatness and a plan for greatness for me. Yes, he did say, he loves me with an everlasting yell. Yes, he did say, I'm his favorite. Yes, he did say, I if I give, heaven will be open over my life. Yes, he did say, if I'll take a step of faith, he will meet me there. He will meet me there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, I, I declare we're a winning church full of winning people who are going to go and win other people to Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of our online church family today. 
I know God has spoken a fresh word into your life and we celebrate that with you. If you would like to contact our church, leave a prayer request or a comment, please go to our Facebook page or to our church website and do that. We would love to hear from you. If you are ever in the Palm Beach, Florida area, we would love to have you worship with us. Our worship services are every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. And we invite you to come if you are ever in this area. God bless you.